thank you for the time. Uh, thank you for the time um, that you guys have come out to um, listen to us. Um, I'm sure you have other better things doing than to listen to what we have to say, basically, right? Um, but thank you for taking all that time. I also want to thank Peter for, um, I think um, I only just met him once, but he's um, a very, uh, it can come off as aggressive in the sense of if he wants to get something done, all right, which is good in business, uh, basically, because um, you don't want to get the you no know, first time. You find a way to make it work, basically, whether or not the person tells you no. So um, commend him for that and for pulling the team. I think I'd seen this community some a while ago on maybe channels, news or something. By that time, I think it was just a clip of what the program mm -hmm. Peter had or something. Right? You know, so yeah. I didn't really know much about it until I met him and, mm -hmm. um, at the embassy. Um, so I was like, oh, so this is the guy, basically. So well done on what you're doing and um, nice to meet you guys. Um, so two things. Uh, yeah, it's currently 4 a.m. where I am. So I'll try, try not to be too loud because um, I have a baby sleeping, basically. Oh, but I also try to be audible you. at the same time. Thank so you. Just um, thank you. Um, bear with me um, um, also. Um, all right, so sorry, uh, sorry, message it for me. Money, and <laughs> no, 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 that's not me at all. So, please, that's not me. Um, Okay, first of all, let me just make some um, ground rules um, from my side. Um, when I mean ground rules, just things that will guide me. Um, I've stopped what I'm doing, so I'm concentrating on this now. Um, so just things that will guide me. First of all, um, for me, business is not... Um, um, I personally, um, I know we have different people on the call, right? So please don't be offended by whatever I'm going to say. Whenever I speak with um, founders, you know, I'm usually very um, direct and blunt, right? So please don't be offended by that in any way. I'm just putting some um, ground by ground. And secondly, I'm also a, a Christian. Like I said, we have many people here, so I don't really know everybody here, so I'm a Christian. And so um, whatever I do is governed by my faith, basically, even my business, how I, the principles I use and um, how I run my company is governed by my faith. So. Um, if even if you're not a Christian, you could still learn for, for, from me, right? Basically, so, um, you know, uh, generally, basically, but um, that's what governs what I do, right? And uh, it reflects in how I interact with investors, it reflects, it reflects in how I interact with customers and founders, basically. So I think uh, it would be a good learning for you, right? Um, whether or not you um, resonate with me in that same um, light, right? But just take that which is good, like the scripture says, take that which is good, uh, hold fast to it, basically. Right? So in what I'm saying, hold fast to it. Then um, would also be a little bit more um, um, direct, scientific in our approach, right? I know many people have come, so many people say many things. Um, a lot of people would um, talk about um, what do you call it? Um, a lot of people would talk about um, you know, you need to do what you have to do, work very well, you know, you know, that motivates you basically in, in this, which is absolutely fine by me. I, I, I appreciate that actually, because to be honest, the startup business running a company can be very tiring and frustrating at times. So you need all the encouragement that you can get, right? Uh, especially at the early stage, uh, generally. So. Uh, you need all those encouragement, which is good, and they will still keep coming, no problem. But for my own approach, I like to go into business, right? into the metrics, the numbers. That's how to grow your business as far as I'm concerned. Um, right? uh, the other part is just to encourage the founder to keep doing what he needs to do, basically, because um, most founders get frustrated. You know, I have these metrics that says um, 
if a company causes five years in business, right, it's likely not to fail because most companies fail within the one to five years. Now, if a company causes 10 years, it's likely to be institutionalized, meaning that if you don't get to your, if you can't get to your 10 year mark, right, you likely, the business can likely also still fail between five to 10 years due to um, wrong governance, wrong issues with the uh, poor management and all of that. But in terms of the business model itself, it's one to five years, basically, right? Uh, but in terms of institutionalizing the company, you know what institutionalizing means? It means that the company has gotten to the point where you hear something like flutter with too big to fail, right? What that means is simply saying that the company has transitioned from a, a founder business to um, a kind of um, board kind of structured kind of business whereby even if the founder is not there, the company will just keep running, right? So nobody in the team is autonomous and that, although you have very few of that in Af Africa because the market is still young, but that's really the mindset around it, basically, right? So uh, some of the things I'm talking about will be geared towards that. First, the first stage, figuring out the first stage, ensuring you cross your five-year mark if you're just starting. If you've already started, ensuring that you cross your 10-year mark. And even if you have crossed 10 years, you're still figuring it out. Just imagine yourself that you're still in uh, the five years mark, right? You just reinvent yourself, right? For example, I had done five years before my business started really kicking off. I had to reinvent the company, right? I recalibrate my timeline again to five years, basically, you know, so it's, it's all in the mind, but the point is you, you understand that particular flow. And before I continue, just introduce myself a little bit. Um, I know um, um, Peter has tried to do a good job. I don't know, Peter, you can just let me know how many minutes I have so that I, I can guide myself and I don't um, take too much of our um, friends' time here. So, so typically, every speaker boss has like 40, 45 minutes, then you take questions for 15 minutes. But you are, you know, last speaker for the day, and it's intentionally so. That way you can have, you know, more time and we will not stop you. So boss, shoot. Okay. Okay, okay, all right. Then also you guys will be, will be good to help me. I know everybody's turned off their videos, so it's very difficult to be encouraged, right? You know, but if you have the ability to turn on your video, it would be nice just to see some people's face, you know, to encourage, um, since I don't really know much people, here, most people here. Um, okay, so um, thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. All right. Um, so introducing myself, right? So Peter introduced me um, as um, a retail mind, right? So yeah, <clears throat> so I run two companies currently. So the first company I run is Termite. Yeah, let me just put my address on here so you can see what we do. Um, sorry. Since I'm the last speaker, I have all the time, so I can take my time as I like, right? So, <laughs> all right, so I put the address. So the first one is Temai, right? So what Temai simply does is we basically are a communications company. Um, for a long time, we're not really interested in you knowing about us, but um, we've transitioned as a company. So right now we need you to know about us basically, right? Because we've launched a consumer-focused app. But for a long time, we've been purely B2B. Now, what B2B means is for those that may not know, is business to business, meaning that all you do is to serve other businesses and then they now serve the consumers, basically. Um, but now I think it has been reversed to B2B to C, basically. Right? What you have is, you also have what we call B2C. So B2C is business to customers, basically means you serve directly the customers. An example of that would be, um, well, okay, no, those are not because they have business models too. An example would be B2C, 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 B2C. Blah, blah, blah. Most businesses now is B2B, B2C, to be very honest. Or B2C, then B2B. They always have a business aspect. But an example of a B2C company is just a company that is maybe a social media app or something, a company that's just dealing straight with the customers. Or some apps, some bank apps too is B2C, in the sense that they have a retail side, the consumer, direct consumer side, basically. And but these days, more... Well. Yeah, FMCG is there. But most times, most of these companies have a B2B component also because to be very sincere with you, and let me just give you a business tip right now. If you want to really start a business and start making money immediately, B2C is a wrong approach. I will, some people might have a, a, a different opinion, but B2B is the better approach, actually. If you're figuring out your business model, B2B is an approach. Why? Because 
businesses can easily pay you. You can always come out with your B2C side of it, basically. But the B2C side can take long. It can be difficult to market if you don't really have understand the flow of that market. Um, but at times, it's also rewarding, right? You have some companies that have really done well in B2C, but they have to really do well, right, generally. I think the Chinese companies are very good with B2C. Maybe they come out, they just somehow know how to capture the whole market. All these Pampe, OP, they're very good at at getting the B2C market. It's quite difficult, but if you pull it off, it's rewarding, right? But B2B is a faster approach. Um, so Tema is a B2B company, but now we've, we are now a B2B2C meaning that we also serve the consumers. But still, it's still B2B, right? So I'll explain. So B2B is um, companies like Paystack, um, companies like Sterling Bank, um, Wave, and almost every single fintech in Nigeria or across Africa uses our platform. So we have over 12,000 companies on our platform and um, around 80% of them are all fintech companies, basically, right? Almost any fintech you can think of that is currently serving you, right, uh, uses our platform generally. Um, and what they do on our platform is quite um, simple, right? They simply use us to, so we are that guy that you don't know about, right? So meaning that when you pick up a mobile app, say you pick up Kuda Bank on your phone and you try to make payments on Kuda Bank, right? Kuda Bank sends you a message or Piggy Vest, Right, they send you a message asking you to verify yourself, right? Or verify that transaction. So they send you a code, either via email or WhatsApp or SMS, right? So now Kuda Bank doesn't send that code because in its entirety, verification really should include a third party. When verification on your platform doesn't have third party, you are prone to fraud, basically, right? Um, it doesn't matter who the third party is, but the point is a third um a third person has to review that transaction aside from the company triggering it. If not, somebody from the company can verify that transaction. But definitely, if it's coming through our platform, you can't in interfere with our process because the person in your company doesn't know us, right? So that's why it has to go through a third party to truly verify that transaction that is accurate. So what we do is to, we send you that code. Kuda Bank will call us via APIs. APIs is like um, a technology way of calling another company. So they call us via API. We send the code to you. And then once you impute the code on the mobile app on Kuda Bank, Kuda Bank calls us again and asks us that, is this code correct? And then we respond to them, yes. And then they say, okay, they now give you access to that transaction and the money can go through. If we say no, that code, that transaction will fail, basically, right? And it will not go through, you know, generally, right? So that's basically what we do. So we do that for almost everybody right now, um, currently, and even some large names that you know globally also we also serve them basically so really that's what we do as a company at Terma. um and we've been doing it for quite pretty uh, uh, quite some time um, basically in terms of um, the capacity of the company so i'm giving you this background so that you could understand where i'm coming from when i give some details in terms of the capacity of the company the company um, is doing fairly well the company has raised some capacity of money um um, deliberately, we've raised the moderate amounts because we are very careful of our equity in the company, right? So we don't just raise money for raising money's sake, right? We raise money only for what we need the money for part time, right? Not because we want to be known on the punch news or tech crunch that we've raised capital. No, it's because we need that money for an expansion plan or for something. And then we have carefully done analysis of what we need that money for. Right, and so when we collect the money, it must be used for what it has been said for, not to buy a house or buy land or buy a new car, right? Those things are vanity, right? And those vanity metrics, um, you know, will cause problem for your business. It's currently causing problem for many African startups right now because they collect money and they use it for something else, right? Now, two things happen is this. You're not being fair to the investors because you think it's free money. Always remember, equity is not free money. Right, it's still the same thing. It's just that you're not paying interest, but it's somebody's blood and sweat, right? And so when you use money um, wrongly, it's going to come back to you. Basically, right? it's not so fair. And most time, it comes back in a bad way to the startup. The startup ends up failing. Some will be like, ah, but the startup has stayed for ten years. It's only a matter of time. We've seen companies stay five years; they will still die. Basically, why? Because they're not using the money well, right? And the business will tell you that something is wrong. Basically, right? So most times, you happen some after ten years. The company still fails, right? So you need to be very careful. 
as you raise capital for the business, be sure you are using it for what it's set for, right? And nobody stops you. Investors won't stop you from paying yourself. You pay yourself very well, right? It's fine. But at least let it be that you are paying yourself for the work you are doing, not that you are siphoning money, right, for um, other purposes that might not be um, directly correlating to the business, right, which is something you should be careful about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, um, yes, so that's that's basically what, we do, what we've done at Termite and what we're still doing basically as a company. Now, while running Termite, I've had founders come to me and also ask me, so how do I build a business, sustain a business and all of that? I was getting so intense sometimes, right? So I decided to start a different company, right? Called ID Ventures, right? So ID Ventures is a different company. Now, what ID does is quite different, right? So what we do is we basically sit with the founder, figure out your business model, check it out if it's going to be operational and if it's going to be investor friendly. Um, if you qualify for um, our own investment capital, which is very small, it's just $10,000. If you qualify for it, we move forward with introducing you to our investor network and you can get access to that capital basically. But if not, we have other packages that can also help you. Things like um, introducing you to investors maybe for a specific fee, right? If you don't qualify for our, our own private fund, we can also do um, external introduction, but for a specific fee. So so, so, so we also do, do, do that. But aside that, um, we also help you through the nuances of the business. So for example, one thing most African founders don't know is that foreign investors might not invest in you if your company is local, purely local. And I'm talking in the tech space. Some of them require you to have registration in Delaware or in the UK or whatever. It's just an unspoken rule, but it's just the truth, right? So you might need to switch to a Delaware entity. So ID does that basically. You can get, get you set up in Delaware and all of that basically, bank accounts and everything. Basically, right. So we review your business and show that you are legit before we do all of those things, right? And um, then in terms of your tax filing, sometimes it's difficult to figure out the US structure. It can be very complicated, right? So we help you figure out your tax filing and all of those things, right? And then uh, we sort that out for uh, um, a token, basically, right? So so that's what ID does. Just helping the business founder navigate through funding, business operations, business modeling, and all of that, basically, which is essential. Now, why am I taking time to explain this is because what I want to share with you, I'm going to break it down, basically, why all those things are critical in growing your business. Growing your business is not necessarily just them. Um, then, sorry, ID also offers community. So we have other founders that are successful who has raised capital. So in total, ID's founders, all ID founders have raised over $200 million, basically. Right, and they are currently, the total value of all those companies is $2 billion, basically, right, right now. Um, you know, generally, right? N not all those money has come from us, basically, right? Uh, some of those money have come from external investors. But my point is that we track the activity of all the founders on our platform, and some of them are fairly successful. Some of them you know already: Bumper, PayHippo, Money Africa, like Termai, Mercury, um, and a bunch of other companies, right? Um, in a global scale, basically, right? So a couple of them. Um, basically, so now going straight to the topic, so I don't waste your time. Um, is growing your business, right? I'm going to start from metrics because that's where a lot of people have issues with. So, um, let me just I don't know if can I share my screen if it's possible. Uh, one minute. Yes, uh, for that person asking, you know, you should read what it said, your phone number. It has to be an inter international format, basically, meaning that you know, if you expand your screen, that international format, it explains the 234, put 234 before your phone number, right? Because we have people submitting from other countries. So you have to put 234 before your phone number. If not, you wouldn't activate. All right. I can share my screen now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, sorry. What, what am I sharing? Oh, let me see if I'm sharing the right thing. Okay, I think I'm sharing the right thing. All right, so you can see this, right? Okay. Let me just take this data away. Okay. 
All right, so um, because of time, I'm not sharing any slide or anything. And it's because this is a business uh, me, uh, meetup, right? And we are trying to figure out how to grow our business. Um, I might be a bit boring. I might not be as energy as the last speaker. Sorry about that. But um, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll make sure that this is what your while, right? Because I know this program was paid for, right? So I'll make sure that it is what your while, basically, right? Um, so let me just go straight, right? And uh, a lot of things I'll do is from the IED side because this is where we support companies a lot, founders, right? So this is where I'm going to be talking from. We've already done extensive work here. Right, so I don't need to reinvent the wheel again, um, you know, generally, right? So basically, um, this is what ID does now. Many of the things, I'm going to take some touch points from some of the resources we have. Like I said, I'm not writing any slide or anything. So a lot of things, I'll just show you where to get it and you just go straight there, basically, and you can get it. And even on this call, um, I also, I'll put some links there. But if Peter wants me to send it directly to him and then he can send it to you, no problem, uh, basically. Right? So. If some of this information, you can get it on that learn on the founder's article so you could see some of these things. Because some of them, I I wrote them personally myself, right? I write some from my team, but I, I reviewed some of those uh, write-ups, some of them on the business growth and um, following up very, very important things, compound growth. And I think there should be one more article, which I think is very important, which I mentioned about the, the Laware startup thing. Um, give me a second, let me see. Okay, yes, that's under taxes. Very important to read. Uh, many of the things I wrote here, many founders don't know about it, right? So I think it's step by step um, about all these things. So the first step, let me start from, um, let me just start from talking about your company generally, right? Um, let's go to company analysis. Just generally talking about your company, um, right? So first of all, right, um, in growing your business, you have to first of all understand where you're coming from, right? So you have to know what the business is really about, right? Um, I remember when I started, I used to use vanity metrics, right? Sorry, vanity information to explain my business. I usually say things like, uh, oh, we are a retention. When I vanity buzzwords and all of that, we are this, we are that, we are a retention platform, we are a sophisticated automatic um, tech platform that does this, this, this. Very complicated for investors to understand and even for founders to, or my customers to even understand. So I trust myself on a basic level. On a basic level, what are we really as a company? Are we, who are we as a company, right? You know, can somebody understand us without me having to explain myself for almost uh, three minutes, right? Or four minutes? Can I just see one line and people will get what we do, right? You know, it was a very, um, it was a very, it was a discovery process for, 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 for me to really, really explain what we do, right? But at some point, I finally was able to do that. All right, so I have to ask myself, uh, you know, um, initially we've changed it to communications, right? Um, that's if you go to Tema and you see, it's now communications made easy for Africans, basically. But then I used to, when I figured it out, I actually, I said we're a messaging company right now. Now, when I said that word, messaging company, and I put it on all our banners everywhere, our customer base grew from 100 customers to like 2,000 customers. Somebody will be like, how is the, co the correlation? The correlation is simple. The customers got it. So when they come to the platform, they understood what you are, right? So it's always good to ensure your messaging is very important. And the first messaging is your one-liner. This is your one-liner, right? The one-liner is something that has to be everywhere with your customer. If you really want to grow your business, the one-liner has to be unique, right? It has to be speaking directly. Communication made easy for Africans. I'm sure you get it, right? You, this thing tells you volumes. It tells you one thing. It tells you that we, we only serve Africans, right? Uh, African companies and all of that. Even if we serve foreign companies outside, it's still foreign companies doing business in Africa, basically. That's what we said. So it streamlines our market, basically. Uh, it tells you that all we do is communication. Now, communication can be anything. It could be voice, WhatsApp, SMS, you know. It could be different things, voice calls, SMS messages, anything communication is what we do. Then we now start breaking it down into what we really offer and then the customers that we offer basically, you know. But the point is that the first thing is that the communication tag is there, you know. Someone will be like, okay, I'm showing you Temai. Let me pick somebody else so you could see that I'm not, um, it's not just about Temai, right? So some companies that I think they are doing a good job in communicating what they are, you know, um, 
let me pick these guys. So some of these guys are my customers. So it's it's easy, it's good for me to tell you what, what they do. So this is a simple solutions to power your business, right? It's quite straightforward, basically, right? They collect payments, you assess loans, you manage operations with the bank business banking solution that meets all your need. Now, when you come to this platform, this tells you everything you need to know about money points, basically, right? No ambiguity, no complicated thing. You know, so Tema is a part of YC. So YC is Y Combinator, right? It's a global accelerator where you have um, companies like Stripe, Brex, Airbnb, and all of that, right? And so we're part of them. Um, um, we're a part of, um, you know, the accelerator basically. And YC would tell you something, basically. YC would tell you that you should not be, you should try as much as possible not to use buzzwords when you're explaining what you're doing be simple as possible right you tell you be simple as possible and make things people want basically right make things people want. make make softwares that people actually want and people actually want to use basically don't make softwares that or make platforms that or offer a business that you think is the right thing right for a customer no, you should make it something that people actually need, right? No matter how interesting your idea is, if people don't need it, it's not, it's, 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 it might not be useful. Now, there are some businesses that are for future purposes. For example, you have things for space, things for, um, you know, even some artificial intelligence, all those things, you know, they're trying to bring the future now, basically. But the truth is that you will notice the solutions are still what people can use. They try to drill it down to what we people use. When they say AI, they try to integrate it to your PowerPoint, integrate it into your everyday life copywriters because they need you to. They want to translate the fantastic software into some basic things that people can use, you know. And so that's very, very critical when you are trying to focus on your business. You know, see this modern online and offline payments for Africa. They've also streamlined what they do basically. Pista helps you, helps your business in Africa get paid by anyone in the world. That's literally what they do, you know. Um, this endless possibilities for unlocking boundary payments, boundless payments, and this is what they do. Flutterwave is like an endless possibility. You can receive money, like they've, they've become so good that you can literally receive money from anywhere, basically, right? You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. They are mind blowing, to be honest. I don't say, say that for many companies, but I can tell you that um, that's, they are really mind blowing right now. Basically, right, yeah. the kind of things they've integrated, Apple Pay, you, you, you don't even want to know how sophisticated their platform is now. It's very amazing. Actually, they have a new app called Send, you know, so really, really, that's what they do. Now, let's go back to what I'm saying. Right. So you need to know, your messaging has to be clear, right? You need to know what the problem is that you are solving, first of all, right, which is what are the core issues that you're trying to solve? It needs to be broken down. Try not to use buzzwords. Be simple as possible. Let somebody from your 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 father or your mother be able to explain your business clearly. Also, so be simple. Then the solution has to be clear. The target sub segments, meaning that what are the segments you are trying to touch? Right. For me, I was trying to touch fintech, edutech, microfinance, retail, online retail. And right now, like I said, you know, I have this dis distribution clearly put. Right. I have distribution of financial. Fintech, I told you that 89% of my traffic is fintech, right? Um, um, then I have, you know, bank, I have retail, you know, and all of that. So basically, I've been able to get the target segment, right? And I put this five years ago, basically, right? You know, and I was able to address it, right? At that time, I said I want to focus Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Ivory Coast. So currently, I've done Nigeria. Currently, I'm in Ghana. Right now, I've unlocked Ivory Coast, basically. So I'm going it. Because I've written this thing down five years ago, right? I can I've been following it steadily, consistently over time. And you know, following it. So each each year we figure out okay, how do we enter into Ghana? How do we enter into Ivory Coast basically? So that's the point, right? If you don't write some things down, it, it's you can't really you don't have a basis, you know. Like I used to say, anything you cannot measure, you can't grow, basically. So if you cannot measure your growth steadily, right? If you cannot measure what you are doing on a day-to-day basis, right? Or a week-to-week -week basis, you can't really scale or grow that business basically, right? So you need to you need to pay attention to what you are putting down. Founders think, think that this thing is tedious, but to be honest, if you really want to grow the business, it shouldn't be, t be tedious. And even the target markets, we had USA, Nigeria, Ghana, we are currently in all these places, basically, right? So, so that's really how you 
you you you really make that work. Now let's move forward away from there, basically, right? Other things that also you need to consider when growing your business, right? Um, is so I'm taking it step by step. Now you understand your business, you understand what you need to do, you know your markets, you know all of that, you know your customer persona. I don't want to go into that because some other founders might have done that or people that came to speak, right? So you know your persona, you know all of that basically. But now let me come from the angle of money and the business basically. Now, what you should understand is this, and it was a lesson I learned from um, some founders, uh, um, is this. The real business, to be very honest, if you want to grow a global business and scale very well, you should always understand this one single point. If you don't understand this single point, you don't understand your business, to be honest. Now, do you know why Coca-Cola, Disney, um, PayPal, even Elomox companies and all those companies, do you know why many of these companies are growing and growing and scaling? Right. It's because they understand one single fact. That's the founders. Yes, the, you can have a fantastic product. You can have a fantastic customer base. But if you don't understand this single thing, the company will fail. And that's what most African founders don't understand. Right? And that's why they really have issues. Your product as a company, at the initial stage, it might be your software or whatever. Fine. But once you scale your five-year mark, right? like I said, the one to five years, what you need to figure out is what they call product market fit, which is, does your product fit the market, right? And can people pay for it? Do you have willing customers, people who are willing to pay for it and have the financial capability to actually pay for that product, basically? Now, within your one to five years, that's what you need to figure out, right? Who should I be targeting? How should I message those customers? And are they willing to pay for it? And do they have the capacity to pay for it? Now, as, uh, for Temai, we started charging from day one. We didn't do any freebies. We don't do freebies. We charge you straight up because we don't have time for that. We are dealing with vendors. And these vendors are telcos and they charge a lot of money, right? So we can't be behind that cost for customers. So from day one, we knew that there's no freebie. We have to charge straight up, right? Initially, people were saying, my people might not pay. But eventually, people started paying because... You focus on ensuring the software and the products is doing very well, right? Um, it's serving a need, right? And then people should be willing to pay for it. Now, when people see your product as premium, they see it, they associate it with sophistication and with, um, um, with um, means the product is good for them. But when it's too cheap, at times you might feel like mm, you can't, might not attract some customers, to be very honest. Some big customers, they might not want to use your platform because they feel that, oh, this thing is, is too cheap, meaning that. They are not really paying attention to the um, to to efficiency, the delivery. The guy even asked if you if you if you are charging ten ten dollars, how then can you guarantee that you will not have downtime? That's what you hear some some companies say. So it's very very key. Now you get to another level, you know. Some of them will be why are you using a local bank account? So you don't even have a US account that will that will pay you. Ah. These people cannot handle our traffic. These are the kind of things you be here. So it means you have to be iterating as you are growing, you know, to meet global standard, basically. Right. Um, now coming back to what I'm saying. Now, why these companies thrive and these big companies keep thriving is because they understand one single fact. And that single fact is that when you have crossed your one to five year mark and you are within your five to ten year mark, the company stops being the product. Do you understand? It's no longer about the product again. The company the real product you are selling is the stock price of your company, meaning that the value of your company, the stock price of your company. Now, anything that will contribute to the stock price of your company, right, is what matters. If you don't, anything that does not contribute to what to the stock price of the company does not matter. That's what people don't understand. So if you're coming up with new products, the question is, will this new product enhance the value of my company. Will this new product enhance this? If I come up, I'm trying to target customers, will this customer base enhance the viability of my company's stock price, right? Companies between five to 10 and above, that's what they care about. Coca-Cola, everybody, they are concerned about their stock price. Now, for a public company, you have the, you have the unfortunate situation of the market determining your stock price, meaning that your stock price will go up and go down. People can short sell, buy, sell. 
because you're in the public market. But in the private market, you control your stock price, meaning that it is between you how you can negotiate it well with investors, right? Now, how do you now improve that? It means that you need to convince investors on a monthly basis that your business is what, what you say it is, basically. And how do you do that? By increasing your revenue, by increasing profit margins, by increasing gross margins, by adding very top customers to your list, right? Improving who and who are your customer base, increasing your numbers, increasing your social media presence, you know, selling fantastic products, having nice solutions, all those things are what, you know, indirectly adds to your stock price. So that when you go out to fundraise, you cannot list all these things. We have 10,000 customers now. We have 50 million customers. We have, we've done 100 million transactions. We are this, we are that. We now have TikTok, we have uh, Facebook, we have Google, we have uh, Central Bank, we have BOI. They are all our customer base. All those things are what you now list out. And when you list those things out, investors cannot argue with you again. They will not be like, oh, uh, indeed, this company is valued at what? $15 million, basically because you've listed out all those things, right? right? And then, then there's what they call investor multiple. So meaning that, okay, this one is just a, like a little di di digression just for you to know it by the back of your hand. Investors used to value companies based on uh, revenue multiple. So the way they do it is this. If your annual revenue, meaning that when you calculate your all your revenue month on month, month on month, if everything amounts to $1 million for a, a single year, what they do is that, um, the last revenue as I did, 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 did December, they will check. If your December revenue is say um, $100,000, for example, no, let's just pick it small. Let's say your 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 current revenue is uh, your last revenue in December is um, or any month at all that you are raising money. The month you are raising money, they will check your revenue. If your revenue is $25,000 per month, the last revenue in the previous month, let's say you are raising it in May, if if April's revenue is twenty five thousand dollars, they will do twenty five thousand dollars times twelve. They call it run rate. So investors are not concerned with ARR. They don't care about that. <clears throat> what they are concerned about is run rate. ARR is annual recurring revenue. How much you are making last year, previous year? They don't care about that. What they are concerned about is that revenue for that month, the last month before you say reason, times twelve, which will give you three hundred thousand dollars then they will now look at the public market. Who is trading? How much is the similar company of your company trading at? So most times the company might be trading at three times their revenue. Before COVID, companies were trading at 10 times revenue. But after COVID, many companies, their value dropped. So people started trading at say three times and all of that public market. Now in my own space, uh, similar company like us is Twilo. Twilo is trading at three times revenue, right? Um, but because we are a startup, investors can give benefit of the doubt and say, okay, your company might be traded at five times re revenue, right? So what they will do is they will not say, okay, even if Trilo is trading at three times, because you are a startup, there's still potential to grow. Trilo is already big. They've reached a cliff. So they, their growth might not be so sporadic, but you are still small. So let's give you an additional two times, meaning they'll make it five times revenue and they do 300 times five, 1.5 million. So what happens is that the value of your company is 1.5 million. That's what they will, they, will, they will peg it at. Now, if you are not saying, ah, 1.5 million is small, my company is valued at 2.5, the question they want to ask you is that, based on data we've done and your revenue, the company is valued at 1.5 million. How can you prove that the company is valued at 2.5? That's where all these things are listed before. Your The kind of customer base you have, um, is your company making profit at all? Um, what do you call it? Uh, how many traffic have you done so far? What kind of customers are on your list? All those things are now what you cannot add to your claim that my company, yes, based on data is 1.5. But based on all these things I've mentioned, we have the potential to grow even more than 1.5. So currently, I think that we are worth 2.5. Then people argue, 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 you cannot come at 2 million. And then you, you stabilize at that. That's really how they value um, your company. Right now, you say, uh, well, I'm not raising money now, I'm raising money in the future. The truth is that if you don't start thinking like that right now, right, by the time you want to raise money in the future for your company, it will be difficult for you basically, right? Because you've not done the work that you need to do moving to, to that point. So stock ownership, all those things are very, very critical when starting the business. Now, let me just buy away from, from there and move to other things. 
Now let's go really into growing your business basically in, in depth, right? Um, some of this template, I will share it later, you know. Um, so now you figure out your business, who you are, what you are and all of that. You figured out your focus, stock price, what can increase your stock price. You figured all of, all, all of those, those, those things out, right? Um, don't think about money yet, right? Don't think about raising funds. Leave funds away first. Because the truth is that investors will only invest in a company that is willing to grow. You know the reason why you go to investors and they say, no, you're like this African investors, they are not good, they are not this, is that you don't have the numbers to back the money you're asking for. And nobody will give you money if they don't think that you can increase the money. Because now founders are thinking money is free, free money, and investors understand this. All of them are very careful with releasing any money at all. right? So you need the numbers to back what you are saying. Right. If your numbers are good, this company that raised big, big money that, that we hear on, on, on the news is not because they go there and they put um, something in their mouth and they say, I give me money. Right. An investor just gives the money. No, it's because they have metrics to show. Right. And investors see these metrics, make their determination based on these metrics and what, and they go ahead. So that's why you as a founder need to think like the investor also. Right. So that you can know how to position your business rightly, you know, for future growth and capital, basically. Now, coming back to the business now, the next thing you now need to figure out is, um, first of all, I told you, you figured out your market, you figured out where you want to sell, how you message, you figure out your company and all of that. Now you need to figure out your operations internally. How do you ensure the operation matches how you are selling the customer? Because if your operation, operations are, is failing, it's going to be a serious problem for your company, right? Now under operations, you have different things that you should be looking at, right? Um, sorry, these things are blocking my my view. All right, so different things, right? There is the sales process, right? The user cost flow process, basically, all those things are critical, right? Uh, part of that process, yeah, I usually start from the pricing model before we go to the uh, user flow process. So let me just take it this way. Now, the the pricing process is how much you want to sell your service. Right, and why are you selling at that particular price? You need to know that very critically. How much are other competition paying in the market? Right, and at what point will you price? Now, don't get it twisted. Don't think that charging low, right, is the best way to go about it. It's not always the best way to go about it, right? Because you would always have somebody that might underprice you. I'll give you an example. If a startup comes up in my space now, right, and says, oh, we are the next big thing. Right, and we are going to charge um two naira per SMS because Tema is charging, just give an example, four naira per SMS. You know that I will not flinch at all. Why? Because I can easily charge that same customer 2.5 or 2.2, or even the two naira basically. I can come with the concession and say, you know what, you are going after this customer, no problem. I will go after that same customer and charge that customer two naira. I will charge all my customers for now. Then I will make up for the loss of not getting profits from this customer, from all my other customers, right? You know, because I have the luxury of doing that, right? And so you that are just starting, I will choke you in all those places, basically, you know, because I know that even if I'm not getting the full, the full I'm not making any major profit on that money, right? I'm still charging cost price, maybe, or whatever. I'm still making money from other customers, basically. So my point is that when you're dealing with big companies, Pricing should not be the number one focus on reducing your price because they would always find a way to edge you out. Basically, they have ways they can do it, and they've done it to me many, many times. Right, all the competitors in the market that are bigger than me, right, they will come with a different model with the customer, and the customer will be like, "Well, these people have the capacity, they have the market, they have the software, they've been in the market for a long time, and they're offering us a very much well, watering price. Why should I go with you?" Right. So the question is always the. If you're charging the, the service, it should always be what are you offering uniquely? Right? That's why I say you should always figure out who your company is and what is your unique value proposition that you're serving, right? And so I focused on that unique value proposition from the start. I looked at all the competitors. What are they lacking, right? You know, and how can I offer that unique thing to the customer that is different from what they are offering? And how do I price my pricing to reflect this unique thing, right? So when I go to the customer, they'll be like, why is your price higher than all these other guys? I'm like, because they don't offer this business, we offer it better in this way, right? And all you need to do is to try us out for 
a few days basically and see or, if, or, or, or a single month just before one month and see it basically right and make it they try it and they're like oh wow your service is quite different actually you know so my price reflects what i'm offering right and so they are willing to pay that price because they know that i'm offering a premium service than what these other guys are offering yes these guys are offering a cheaper service but they don't care about you as a customer right you know once things go wrong they don't even inform you they don't follow up they don't have a personalized service for me i offer you a personalized service basically and so people are willing to pay for that personalized service basically right so your price has to reflect that generally right now when you figure out the price you now need to figure out your process because if you charge well your product is is also good if you don't have a good process internally everything will still fail and the customer will still churn out and you want to prevent customer leaving your your platform right so you need a process now this process i learned that labels business school and i've been using it for a long time you know i'm very sure when they were teaching us they, they did not really know that I'm going to use it the way I'm currently using it, basically, right? But they taught it for a different thing. But me, I just adopted that tem tem template and I and I figured it out for my own business. Now, this they call it the order lead time. So order lead time is what is the time it takes to offer your service to a single customer, basically? And how do you reduce that time? Because the longer the time, the easier is it for the customer to churn. And then also the more complicated and costly it is on your business, right? Now, as a business, remember, everything we are doing is to increase the stock price, remember? Now, if the order lead time is longer and the, it's more expensive, what happens is that your profits will reduce and investors will not be interested in your company. Remember that. So you need to figure out that order lead time so that it doesn't increase your cost, right? And so you can manage your costs and... Um, it can encourage investors to use your business. So the orderly time is there now. This orderly time is broken down into marketing and promotion, sales qualification, customer activation, onboarding, re-engagement, and the, the software, basically. Right? Now, this is for my own, my own flow, basically. For other companies, you can tweak it as you like, basically. Now, for each of these, what you need to do is to figure out what and what, how much it costs, and what is the time for each of these, right? So if you see... You look at this, you see um, marketing and promotion, basically, you see 30 minutes. Sales, you see 30 minutes. Customer activation, two minutes. Email onboarding, two minutes. Engagement campaign, you know, um, is 10 minutes, basically, right? So I'll just add everything up. How many minutes is that in total? So maybe this is 30, 60, 62, 64, then 10, maybe 74 minutes in total for the whole process to happen. It can happen over different times, but the point is you need to know what are those times so you can manage it. So meaning that marketing teams should not spend more than 30 minutes marketing to a single customer, basically. Right? Sales teams should not spend more than 30 minutes onboarding or, or talking to a qualifying a single customer. When they're activating a customer's account on the platform, it shouldn't be more than two minutes, basically. It shouldn't, it shouldn't take seven days, one month to activate a single customer. If that happens, then there has to be a reason why that happens. So for example, there's an exception in my business. If a customer doesn't have the documentation required, it could take like four days, basically. But if they have the documentation required, it takes like two minutes, right? It doesn't even take long for us to activate them because they have all the documentation required, basically, right? Or they are, they are using some of our default con configuration so we can activate them very quickly, right? So we have different time, basically, right? So don't really follow this time. It has changed in my business. But the point is, I put some time in there to to make it to reduce the time that we spend so that people don't stay on phone call for a long time, calling and calling and just staying with the customer. No, the question is get what you need to do and end the call quickly. Don't don't stay on the call and be chatting with the guy. I used to talk my support team. Don't spend call and you're just with customer. You don't have time for that because there are other customers you need to talk to. So keep it flowing. So that's why if you go to, if you're in the US and you go to any issue, you will see that they have like a flow. I'm sure... Um, Peter, if, if you go to all these um, McDonald's or anything, you'll see that they'll put stickers on the this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to move, move, move. They'll be moving. So what they're trying to do is that there are people on the queue. It's not like uh, in Nigeria sometimes that you see that you wait and wait and wait. They call, you say, oh, where's my food? Oh, God, wait, oh, God, wait. Mm -mm. This one, they have quality check, right? So they have to flow. So you will put this, it's like, okay, it's two minutes here, two minutes in wrapping, two minutes in pouring the... The, the the jam on the on the burger two minutes in putting the lettuce everybody has to follow that because if they don't do that 
timing will increase, they will lose customers and the cost of doing the business will be increasing. So they need to follow that order lead time to ensure everything flows. Now, when you do all these things, it's now determining what the total order lead time is and your cost of acquisition is. So all these things determine what your cost of acquisition. I put some metrics there. I say, when you're getting your marketing and promotion, it is head of marketing salary, 50% of head of market. These things took me time to be able to, to, be able to figure out, right? Nobody teaches this in business. Right? So you have to figure out as a business. Um, you have to do a lot of reading. So you know, you're getting this free, to be honest, right? So head of marketing salary, 50% of head of marketing salary plus 100% of the all the sales team salary, right? The sales and marketing team salary, sorry. And plus the cost of ads that you are doing. That's what determines the cost here for marketing and promotions. For sales qualification is 100% of the sales support staff salary, right? For call activation, 100% of the customer success salary plus cost of calling the customer is what determines where your cost is. So if you go through and through, 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 or up to software, what is the software you're using? You know, the software, the cost of all the softwares, you know, that will not determine what your, what, your, what your cost of acquisition cost is. Now, if you don't know this number in your head as a founder, when you're raising money, you will, you will not be able to raise money from investors because they will, some sophisticated investors will always ask you, what is your cost of acquisition? Your cost of acquiring a single customer. You must know this number in your head, basically, if you are raising funds. If you don't know it, you can figure it out. Because I've lost some investment deals. I may, I said a lot of things, fancy things. I said so many sophisticated things. And the moment they got to, what is your cost of acquisition? I started stammering, right? And after that, the guy, the, cost, the investor will say, if you don't know where your cost to acquire a single customer is, so why should I commit $100,000 to your hands? It means that you, you will mismanage my, 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 my money. So you have to know this number. And don't just know it so that you can raise money. Know it for your business because it's what really ensures that you don't increase your cost. Every month, we're always calculating costs, costs, you know, ensuring that we, we can minimize our bond. They call it bond, minimize the bond. And the way to do that is to manage what the cost of a single customer is, which you can see is, it includes all these people's this thing. All right, so you can just use this template. Now, once you have done this and you know your process and you know your uh, cost, hello, basically. Boss. Hello, boss. Yes, please. Please. Can you check uh, waiting room? You know, I'm not, some people like the waiting room, please. Oh, okay, okay, I'm adding everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, admit all. Okay, all right. So, you know, so I'll still give you, the reason why I'm rushing is because I know there's time for questions, so I just want to run through it. Now, you've done all of this, right? You know your other time, you know everything. Now let's go straight to customer, basically, right? Um, because that's that is now an important aspect of everything. Uh, for that stage, okay, like I said, I'm going to leave this. Um, now all these other ones are determined by money. Well, this this will be the last thing I'll talk about the money part, which is very very crucial. But we'll talk about the money. Let let's let's go straight to the customers now. Now there are different things here on that customer side, which I want you to later go and read up some of these things. The, the articles that are there. On the marketing brand awareness. I'm not going to go into all of this right right now. Uh, okay, let me just touch just a little bit of this in terms of how to market and all of that. Now, many of what I'm saying is talking more as regards um, talking more to how to attract investor capital because I know some of us who are interested in that basically and how to attract customers. Now, in terms of you have figured out your business, your model, everything. Now you built a fantastic product. Right, and now you're not trying to acquire customers and try to convince investors. Number one thing you must do is see if you don't know how to make your brand appealing, go and look for somebody that can do it. Because the truth is that investors are biased, customers are biased. Right? See, if a customer comes to your platform against now, let me show you something. Sorry. And please bear in mind, I'm not um, boosting, I'm not exalting myself, no. I'm just trying to show you critical things in business. Let's look for bulk SMS in Nigeria. Let me show you something. Bulk SMS in Nigeria. No, I'm not, I'm not turning down any brand. I don't know them before, right? Nothing like that. I'm just Googling anybody I see so that you see, you see what I'm talking about. Okay, this is a perfect example. Now, you saw 
I want to see where they put the money. Hold on. Okay, so let me see So you can see what I'm talking about. This company I selected, I want to see. So this is a company. Okay. Which company I select? SMS Mobile 24. Exactly. Now this company, see what they wrote. Book SMS within Nigeria. Get SMS for as low as 1.5 naira by SMS. Doesn't this look attractive? 1.5 naira, basically. Now let me show you something. Let's adjust to Nigeria. So don't mind this price. Our price is way more expensive than, than, than this. This is for the, the promotional route. All right, so let's just assume this is the price, 2.2 naira. Now look at this person. This, this people are charging 1.5 naira. Now, gen genuinely, right, to be very honest, and I'm not going to say anything now. If you come to this platform and you come to this platform, tell me to be very sincere with you. You come to this platform, you go through it, you look at all this, you go through it, you go to um, about us, you see these numbers, you look at this team, you see all of this, you see all these people, you go to uh, milestones, you see this, you see all of this, you see this, and you go to customers, you know, you see all of this, you go to solutions, you see the kind of businesses that are using the platform, right? You see all these companies. Now tell me, after you've gone through everything, you go to the pricing and all of that. Oh, so you, you now go to the core products, the switch product, what exactly they're offering. You see all these brands using, blah, blah, okay, 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 you go to this. Now, even without looking at the brand, just looking at everything, and then you come to this platform. This one is charging you 2.2 naira. And then you come to this one and you look at this platform. And you, oh, you're charging, they say they have three free SMS, okay. And you're charging me 1.5 naira. Now, genuinely, anybody who wants to answer, which of the platform are you going to use? This one or this one? Now, forget about me. Just tell me your own personal opinion. This one or this one? Which of the platform are you going to use for your message? Is anybody, anybody just let me answer? Just one, 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 one person. I want to know why. Just anybody that is, wants to stop. Uh, that means I'm not communicating well if nobody wants to answer. <laughs> okay, I think people are typing. The chat box. Yeah. The chat okay, chat box. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, sorry, I'm not looking at that. Oh, everything is complicated. I can't even see any chats. Okay. Oh, okay. But okay, one so yours second is, notes. Yours Which is one basically, that delivers? Yours is basically... The UI, that's the user interface is very beautiful. Simple, yeah. exact to the point. Then the user experience as well is simple. I, nobody wants to come to your page and start reading newspaper. You know, so you have yeah. more of graphic, you, you have more of pictures doing the talking. So like from the, your, your home page, for instance, you just have one thing, one picture that says everything, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Oh, Where's that? So, so looking at looking at both websites, yeah. Okay, um, yeah. without thinking through, my mind was already telling me that one looks like a scam. And that happens <laughs> to be the cheap one because okay. the website looks looks tacky and you know, that's just based on the first site, the appearance. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. So that's enough. Now, two things, right? You should, you should be able to notice that. The guy that is saying here about delivery, that's secondary, right? We'll still get there, right? That's secondary. The first part is first, first. Two things I usually say, and I'll explain a breakdown of this website. Now, everything that you see on this time website is carefully done, meaning that everything you see here is not just about the UI now. We deliberately put certain things in every single corner. I'll give you an example now. This is very important. We're talking about the customer now and the investor, trying to convince them that they should give you that money. Now, the first thing you need to focus on this is, well, let me move this thing from my screen. It's really, 
Let me see me from. So I'm, I'm not seeing anybody's face again because this thing is blocking my screen. Now look at this page now. Now, like I said, I'm not exhorting myself or anything, no, because it's the same thing with, if you open Flutter with two, you see the same thing they did on their page. If you open Paystack, you see the same thing, right? You open other platforms for in the same thing. So it's the same model that we're using, everybody's using. All right, now look at this. We are not just interested in you signing up. We want to ensure that you, you get what, you, the first thing we want is that you want you to trust us first, right? So even the colors are very important. You can see the blue color, everything is friendly. Even how the color is laid out. Look at Flutter Wave 2. You see how the color is laid out. It's friendly, white, then you a touch of orange here and there. Then you see human being pictures with the companies trying to tell you that these are real people using our product. We're not just telling you stories. Then they put the layout of companies that, 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 that really use, use their platform. Right. So if you see that they don't misuse colors, Although their logo has plenty of colors. You do see the colors on their background. You see how they carefully use these colors, carefully integrate the colors. It's because they want the platform to be friendly and appealing to you when you come there. They don't just want you to be lost on the platform. And look at this one. The background, everything is already putting you off already, basically. Right. So this is what the very first thing that makes it look tacky is even the colors, first of all. Even before the text is the colors, basically. All right. So the color. The color is very important in attracting. Now, carefully laid out also, how you lay out information is also very important. See, it's not by mistake you see empty spaces all over these places. These things are also well laid out in the sense of these empty spaces is to make you focus on a single thing here, which is communications for Africa and all of this, and then these buttons. That's why this is here. They want you to focus on this thing, basically. Now, but not just focus, we don't just want you to sign up. We also want you to request a demo too. Now, in this demo, you will notice something. We've put a live demo for you even before you log in. So we want you to run a test, basically, right? And see if it really works or not, right? Before you now, so that when you have tested it out, and if you want to do the demo, it might not work for, for me because um, my number is already on the system. So my number might not work. It will just tell me that. Uh, I've already signed up before. Oh, okay. Oh, it's worked. They must have deleted my number. So, you know. So basically, I run a test. All right. Um, so, so, so basically, I, I, I run a test, right? And, you know, it should successful sign up, the test again, and all of that. Right. Then also in this same, okay, sorry, test again. Let me go back. Then you have schedule a demo with an expert, right? So I can book a time with a, like a demo session and I can speak, right? Because most times some companies want to be able to trust you before they even use your platform. Then you have the point of signing up generally. Then you also have, and that thing I also figured out is when you go to a shop, if you see robots in the shop, you might likely leave the shop. But if you see human being faces, you might feel that somebody is there to talk to you, even if the person is not really there. So that's why you see that there are people's pictures here, right? So that you can talk because our kind of business is heavily reliant. Not everybody, every business needs this, but our, our own business is heavily reliant on talking to customers. So that's why we have this page, basically, right? And so you can easily talk and 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 lay, and lay up um, your concerns and people answer you, basically. So all those things are carefully thought out. Even this phone number you see here, not many platforms will you see phone numbers here, but because of our kind of business is heavily customer centric, right? So we need you to call number basically. And we don't want you to be looking for a phone number everywhere. We want you to be able to see the phone number here and make the call straight because we need you to talk to us. Right? So all those things are you know, carefully laid out thing. In different platforms, they have different ways. Some companies don't want you to call them at all, basically. They want you to send an email and they'll respond to you at their time. The reason is because they have too many customers, right? And maybe their capacity is not so, so, so very strong. So they have so many of these basically, right? you know, um, uh, you know, generally. So their business, like Facebook now, you notice that it's very difficult to contact them. They did it purposely, it's by design. They don't want you to talk to them. Uh, so they've made it very difficult to contact their support. Uh, you know, basically they will tell you to send email and they respond at their own time. That's because they have large customer base and, you know, their business is not really, it's not, it's not that kind of business that they want you to contact them basically, right? Because of their kind of service. So all those things matter in how you lay it out, right? You know, from the external to the interior, 
All right, so it's very, very crucial. What was that? Let's go back to, um, yeah, so in terms of marketing, I just let me touch this. In terms of marketing and how you position is also, is very how the, the experience very, very crucial and how you lay out your platform, your website, even your content on social media, everything should be very, very deliberate, basically, right? So that's how you really capture, because the truth is that this is the trick. Investors mostly, they are raising money from outside people from the US or whatever. They don't know the African market. They come to your website. They want to see that, oh, they want to trust you because there are many reasons why they shouldn't trust an African com company. So they want to come to your platform. Let me look at these guys. If they, I think they just recently raised. So, so I can be sure. Yeah, you understand. So they want to trust you by coming to your, to your platform at the first time. And the only way they can trust you is what you are displaying to, to, to them. They want to get your business before even calling you on the phone. And if they come to your platform and they can't see what will make them trust you or understand your, your business, it's, very, it's, it's a problem, right? So that's why every single thing you put on your platform is very, very important. But most founders don't pay attention to this and they figure out why investors are running away. It's because the investor does not understand your business from the platform. Your platform is not emanating trust for them which is something that you have to be very particular about. And let's move away from there so I don't spend too much time. I'm just doing touch here, touch here. Um, so just read up on this market and, explain, and see some of the things that we talked about here. So let's move to, still on the same customer, right? Let's focus on, um, I want to focus on the art of following up and also focus on compound goods. So let's look at the goods. Now, one thing I learned at YC is this, which um, helps a lot, basically, the, the business is, um, sorry, give me a second. Just give me a second. Sorry, please, I'm so sorry. Okay, um, sorry for that break. Okay, all right. So one thing I learned from YC is this, is the, um, is what we call compound roots, right? And tracking things on a week by week basis. Now, now you've understood where your business is, you know what the company is, you, you've been able to convince investors and customers from how your, the look and feel and the UI. Now, the question is, how do you not track growth? Now, sometimes most of us are stuck in the euphoria of how our business looks like, how our website looks like. Some people are falling into that trap many times, and sometimes I still fall into it, but I used to try and trust God for to really come out of that. We are too stuck on how beautiful the website looks like. We are stuck on, oh, Paystack is using my, my, my platform. You know, we are stuck on the brand names that are using the platform, but we don't focus on the compound goods, which eventually a company can still fail if you don't focus on the compound goods. So you know, YC will tell you to track your growth on a week by week basis when you are still very early and maybe on a month or more basis when you are quite big, basically, right? So week on week basis, that's the compound goods. You set the target this week, I want to get $1,000. Now, next week, $1,100. Third week, $1,210. Fourth week, one thousand three three. At the end of the month, I want to have made four thousand dollars. So the question is, if you say you want to make four thousand six hundred forty one dollars, like as as is written here, as your monthly recurring revenue, you need to break it down into month on uh, week on week basis. How much this week should I have made? All right. So, so the reason why you have to break it like this is because when you compile all these weeks together, it will amount to four four thousand six hundred. But if you just put this number at the early stage like this, when you don't have recurring revenue. Like people that are just paying steadily. So 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 right now, me, I don't need to do week on, on week. The reason is because whether or not whatever happens, people will still pay every week, right? And at the end of the month, I already know what I'm looking at because I already have steady customer base that, that keeps going. So what I'm tracking is on a month-to-month -month basis right, right now. Is this customer recurring every month? And if it's not recurring, what happened? Why didn't it recur? Because it affects my MRR. But at the initial stage, when you're still trying to get some customers, you need to do this on a week-on-week -week basis because you are trying to acquire new customers, right? So you need to be able to ensure that, okay, this week, 1,000, next week, 1,100, the other week. I know it might be tedious, and sometimes as founders, we're like, oh, I don't want to go out. I don't want to 
how would I get a customer? You need to do it. You need to roll up your sleeves and jump in, into the market. You can't sit on your laptop and get the customer. No, you need to j j jump on your WhatsApp. You need to jump on your LinkedIn. You need to jump on e emails. You need to do whatever you can do. Come up with ideas on how to get customers. You need to do all those things, right? In order to get these numbers every week, you need to be hitting it every week because if you don't hit it, you will not. You will never get to this amount at the end of the month. So that's what they call the compound goods, right? And if you see it, we talk about 10% compound goods. At the end of the day, it gets you your end of the month. And you keep repeating this on a month-on-month -month basis. This helps you. There's a book on, on, on this. It's called um, Traction, right? How, to, how is any startup can achieve exclusive customer goods? It's a very good, good book. Try and get it. It's going to help you. I think I read it in the early days on this compound goods, right? It was very, very interesting. All right, so, so so basically, this is very important, and it can help you get there. So a minimum on a weekly basis is ten to twenty five percent week on week, right? If you are really going to hit that number at the end of the month, right, you should have between ten to twenty five percent week on week, you know, as you grow, you know. So very very important on that on make, on really growing your business basically. The next part is following up, right? You should get this book on follow up. Um, it's called the form the follow up formula. Very interesting when I read it. It's amazing. Um, really has really helped many companies. Right now, this guy, he talked about took he talked about many things, but me, I took a, these these are the two things I took for my own company, which I think is very important, and it was a problem I was having, right? And that problem is founders usually have a wrong philosophy towards following up customers, right? At the initial stage, I used to take no for an answer, right, and it was not so good. So I had two things: hopeless optimism and thinking silence is rejection, right? And I tested this out. And it works for me, to be honest. Right? So see, so if you have spoken to a customer which you know can create value, and the customer tells you, um, maybe I'm going to look into this next quarter and I'll get back to you, right? We usually have, yes, the book is Traction. Just come to our website and look for this. You'll see the link there. I think I put the link here, Traction. You see it here. Click here to, to the book. And then this one, Hopeless Optimism. I think the book is here. This one is called Follow Up. Right, so hopeless optimism is the customer tells you, um, I'll sign later, or I'm going to get back to you. Now, when you hear I'm going to get back to you, I'll sign up later, just know that the customer is not interested. And you need to make the customer interested. But a problem with, with founders is that they are optimistic. Oh, I just finished speaking. That's what they call vanity metrics. You see, when they're talking to investors, I just finished speaking to um, Wema Bank, and they seem very interested, you know. So, you know, next month, we're looking to onboard Wema Bank. That's not true because they didn't sign the deal with you. That's called hopeless optimism. It's a disease that so many stage founders have, right? And according to this book, rather than wait for a, for a response, follow up closely till you get a clear, clear yes or no. So you can do it on, a, on an interval. The book tells you how to do it on an interval, right? So you can maybe follow up then this week. They say no. You could wait for another two weeks. Then you could follow up again. The point is, they need to tell you yes or no. You must get it and they must tell you, no, you don't need your software. And then you close shop and move on, right? Or they tell you yes, but they should not tell you maybe. Or mm -mm. When they tell you maybe, maybe, it means that they are not really interested. You've not, you've not convinced them enough. So you need to get a clear yes or no. If you don't get a clear yes or no, it's, you're just, um, it's just hopeless optimism, basically, right? And you need to be careful with that, right? Because if not, you can string along because, you know, remember, we're trying to increase our stock price. And then there's also the tendency for the company to die. So if you are hopelessly optimistic, right, you'll be burning money in the company. So your bond will be increasing and, and your revenue will be dropping, right? So you need to don't waste too much time. Follow up, follow up till you get a clear yes or no because you are paying attention to your numbers, basically. Then thinking silence is rejection. Sometimes, because the customer did not answer my, my mail, we think that the customer is not interested. It's not true. That's usually a myth. At times, what, one thing you should understand is that customers, you are not the center of their world. You are not the center of their universe. So don't think that because you sent an email, they should automatically respond to you. No. That's what founders sometimes feel. That, oh, I sent a message to um, the Flutter with CEO. He didn't, he didn't respond to, 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 to me. The guy does not even respond to emails. He don't understand business at all. You need to look for how to get to him. Is it through a group? Whatever you can do. Remember when I raised my first funds from um, E, I think it's in this, uh, it's in this call, um, call too. Um, he's um, the CEO of um, the partner at um, Future Africa and um, former CEO of Flutter. 
we are now close friends now. But when I first raised my money from him, right, I didn't know him before. I've heard him in the industry, but I don't know anything about him. Right. And what I did was I just sent him a random message to WhatsApp. I saw his number on a group. Okay. And Peter, so yeah, just let me pause. Am I still in time or am I? Let's continue. Uh, so, so, boss, please continue. I know that some people are already chatting with that. Okay, you know. Uh, but, but maybe we should still take, maybe just let's just take an extra 10 minutes and then we can wrap it up. Okay. All right, so I'll I'll just I'll soon end now so that um, I don't take your time. Um, I just hope my session is not boring. Um, so, yeah. So I spoke with him. So I, I just met him for the first time on. Uh, so I, I actually went to like a group. I was looking for how do I get uh, access to this guy, right? You know, and I because I don't know him from anywhere. He's not my brother. I don't know him, and I need to raise money from this com company. What do I do? So I, I started looking for groups that I can find this this guy on. Eventually, I found a, a group that I was part of. So I tried to join a group. I, I spoke to somebody, then I joined the group. right? And by the time I was in the group, fortunately for me, he was on that group. And the next thing is, how do I? what message do I send to him that will convince him to use my product, basically? Right? Sorry, to invest in my company. I was like, and I have just one shot. right? I don't know this guy. And I, do, I don't know his personality. I don't know if he will be... If you would listen to me, I just have one single shot, right? And I have to use that one shot. Um, now, let me show you. You know, this our, our session is very practical. So I still have that my chat with him. Let me see if I can send you guys my very first message to him. So you can see it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm doing a screenshot now. Give me a second. You might not have me again here. So just bear with me and... Um, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Golade, we are going to have you again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let me just use all this time. I, oh no, no voila. Let me just use this time to 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 just give you all the resources I can give you because, you know, it's it's not. Not every time that. So this is the very first message I sent to him. So you can see, what it means to, um. Share it. I'm trying to share it on the my laptop. Okay. Um. Just let me know if you can see my screen when I'm sharing it. Um. Can you see my screen? Um, how do I do this now? Okay. Let me just share the screen. Just look at this. So this is the very first message I sent to him. Yes, we right. can see. Yes, we can see. Yeah. Please, this is for this com community, right? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I just say hi. I hope your day is good. I'm the CEO of this. Your future Africa post last year. I just picked something that was interesting that can relate between me and him, right? So I say, oh, you, you guys posted something last year that I read and it got me to YC. Thank you for that. This is my company. We're doing this. We're doing this. You know, blah 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 blah. I believe that you're con currently raising this. Blah blah blah. Close blah 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 hope and blah 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 blah. Got your contact from DNA founders, and I lay, and I waited. It took him some days. Then he responded, awesome stuff. Send me and send an email to my to my um what do you call it to my head of um investments and give me the person's email and that was all. And I didn't hear from 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 him again, basically. And then I started following up with that lady, you know, back to back messages. Um, and all of that, basically. My point was that I, I think you can see how brief that message was. I had just one shot, so I needed to do many things. I needed to, um, um, what, what, what do you call it? He didn't respond to me for a long time, so he was silent, right? But I was waiting, so I gave him some time. I said, I'll give him one week, you know? So if he doesn't respond to me in one week, then I'll reach, reach out to him again. But fortunately for me, him, he responded in one week. For some of us, we think that, because he didn't answer his rejection. At times, I did some other experiments with some founders. They didn't respond at all. I sent a second message, and they said, oh, I'm so sorry. I saw this message, but I missed it. I'm telling you, thank you for reminding me. You know, So at times, we think that they are not responding, but it's not good. It's, they are not, they are actually, they have many things that they are doing. But then you need, sometimes you have just one shot. At times, you could send it under message as a reminder. It's a particular email from, from one particular guy. This guy has been sending me a message for almost one whole month. 
you know, trying to remind me of the of the product, right? Already I've checked this product, but I don't really like it. But if the guy keep reminding me, I'll eventually send him a message and say, okay, I'm, I'm not interested. But the point is that I, I admire the way he's following up over and over, basically, because he needs to get the deal closed, right? So thinking silence is rejection is, is not very good. You, you need to really, really understand that they are not the center of your world and you need to do consistent follow-up, basically. So this article is very good. And I think that you guys would learn a lot from getting the article, basically. Now, after you've done everything well, right, um, you've done your follow-up, you've gotten your customer base, your first 1,000. You see that I'm not trying to, I'm not giving you talk to your first 1,000 customers, all of those things. I'm not doing any of that. So the reason is because I know other people talk about that. I'm just going to the things that founders have issues with, basically, so that uh, you just pick it there. So I'll stop with this on taxes. Now, you've done everything out. Now, one of your most existential threats, right, meaning that as you're doing a business, you need to do a SWOT analysis. What are your strengths, weakness, opportunity, and threats, basically? Your number one threat as a founder in Africa or anywhere in the world is government. That's your number one threat. And government includes the policies they do and, and the tax people. Those two people are, your, are, are a very serious issue. So if you really want to grow your business, from day one, you need to figure this out, taxes and policies of government. If you don't do that, many fintechs have died because of these two things. The bill they've slammed at them is ridiculous and they couldn't pay and they had to shut down. Right? Some of them, the policies became an issue. So now you're trying to raise money. It's fancy. You become a Delaware co company, but you don't know that you are, you've, you've put yourself in a serious problem, right? In the sense of being a Delaware company, co 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 company is good to attract big capital and investors will invest in you. But then it comes with its own issues, which is the taxes and the filings and all of that. So understanding these taxes and filings are very crucial for you, right? And some of them cost money. So before you switch to a direct company, you need to be sure that you are ready to raise money because you, for you to consistently pay for the service, you have to have made, um, you, have, you, have, you have to have been making money or have raised money, meaning that you are making money from customers. Customers are paying you and you can afford to be paying maybe $800 annually. All right, you know, to be able to file your taxes, basically, All right, you know, or you have raised money from investors and it's not, it's not a difficult thing to pay $100 annually to, I said annually, not monthly, right, so to be able to keep re renewing. It's the same thing in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we don't pay those things. You know, this is just simple as paying your taxes for your business in Nigeria. So it's the same thing you have to pay in the U.S. also for your taxes. So all those things are very crucial also. Um, I could go into detail in another time. Maybe if you come to ID, you can always book a session here, schedule a session with us, and we can spend time and break these things down for you very well, basically, right? But because of the time here, yeah, I don't want to bore you guys. So let me just stop there. I've covered some things I think would help in growing your business, um, you know, but I can answer for that question. Every other thing, these templates I could share with you. Um, I think the last time I want to talk about is your numbers, right? You know, I had to figure out how to do accounting. So as a founder, you need to figure out your accounting also, very, very crucial. Um, you can't just wait on the accountants because you need to understand what the accountants are telling you, right? So as a business, two sheets that are your most important sheet as founders is your income statements and your balance sheet, right? Those two things, are, they should be your friend. They call you P&L. P&L is your income statements and your balance sheet, basically. Um, it's just telling you a statement of your asset and all of those things, right? And your li li liabilities. Those two things are very crucial. If you don't know it as the founder, your business, you can't grow your business at all to fail. So you need to know those two sheets very well, um, basically, right? So I'll just stop there, yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say. I swear down, like, I don't even know. <laughs> what to say? What? At some point, I felt like I was inside. I was in a, a, what do you call it? Harvard Business School. In all honesty, I okay. I see, uh, Mister. I uh, no, don't thank me. Huh? If Emmanuel hadn't, Mister. Bolade hadn't uh, accepted that invitation, there is no way I would have been able to impact this kind of insight. I don't know it, and there's no shame in that. You know, it is people who have run that race. That can show us where the pitch, you know, the loopholes. I mean, this is just awesome. This is just awesome. I doubt if you will even get this, the wholesomeness of it. 
from some business schools. Let me not mention any name. You know, this is just, ah, uh, Mr. Goladi, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot has been dropped on us. I was saying to myself that this is not the kind of information you fully get in this sitting, in this meeting. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, the video is recorded. So one has to keep going back. You listen again the second time. You listen again the third time. You listen the fourth time. Maybe by the fifth, fifth time, the spirit has catched on. Now you can, you know, begin to practice all that you have learned. It's just amazing, Mr. Bolabi. Thank you so, so, so much, brother. Thank you. Genuinely, thank you. I mean, you would never know. Thank you for having me. How, how, how deep, you know, these conversations, you know, and how much of impact they have made. Of course, we're going to take um, 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 questions, but genuinely, Mr. Boladi, thank you so, so, so much. Uh, before thank we you for having me. Thank you. So please, I would appreciate that you email some of these templates, you know, to me for sure, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll do that after the call. Yes, please, you know, the entire system will get it. And of course, uh, this is also recorded, but what I'm going to do before posting is that we'll edit out some of particularly your chat with Ian, you know, and I mean, we're also honored. We're going to be having E speak to us on Friday. All right, he's coming to speak on Friday. He's confirmed, you know, which is which is really, you know, something that is very encouraging. And so what I will do is, uh, you know, we'll just edit some of those parts to remove those personal information. This one is, you know, that's limited for our consumption here in this meeting before we post all of that, okay? Thank you so, so much, Mr. Valerie. Thank you. So let's get straight into the questioning. Okay, let's get straight into the question. Yes, Tega, your hand is raised. Please unmute yourself. Speak to us. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bolade. Um, yes, I am overwhelmed as Uncle Peter is as well. Um, what I want to ask first and foremost is, what is your background, technical professional background and training? Secondly is, apart from those two books that you made mention of, I mean, you had to build all of these things from scratch. I wouldn't have even thought that the OTP creation for um, activation or for confirmation is a big deal, especially because, I mean, the banks are there. So Because it's so simple. If, you, do you understand? <laughs> so the, the question, the question is, you have made, you have taken something that seems so insignificant and not even very important, hmm. but as simple as it is, you've made it, it is, it is, it is a sensitive thing. Hmm. Now, what I'm asking is, what was your thought process? What bettered that particular concept? What was your thought process? So if you notice, I'm, I'm running through a stack now saying, First, what is your technical background? Second, what was your thought process in this concept of just OTP? Because OTP is a, like you would say, is a normal thing. But for one person to be handling OTP for across many industries in Africa, and then um, you made mention of, um, you know, having your company registered outside the country and then make investors um, you know, more interested in you is something I have never heard before, apart from um, when you do um, probably reconnaissance on black attackers and those guys, yeah, they have contacts outside the country in Dubai where they even have virtual um, or physical addresses that are scams, but mm -hmm. they are real. The, the companies are there and they are real, right? So what was your thought pattern? What better this? Now, the last question, is okay the third question is what are the books you you would recommend that built all of this because your spreadsheet does not show one school of thoughts <laughs> you said one to five years one to five years is no joke what i what you've made me realize is that we, we have not even thought about we, we we have not thought about entrepreneurship i have let me not let me not i have not thought about entrepreneurship so so I wrote here down in my book why everything you wrote. I've wrote over four pages. Hmm. And in one of them, I just said, entrepreneurship for me and what I think is going to be for an average African or Nigerian is for survival. Hmm. 
Mm. We just want to do them, say make we make it be like say we they make money from inside. But looking at the nitty gritty of what you have showed mm. and even willing to share the templates mm. is a thing that you have learned how to grow, but you have learned exemption. All of these things you have created is even if you fail today or a there's God forbid, even if there is a bankruptcy or something happens somewhere. You can build a business from scratch again. It mm. means you can hold the hand of anybody who is in this meeting and walk the person through the top and stay there and even grow. I under, I hope you you understand what what exactly I'm trying to yes, ask. Yes. So yes. please help help us yes, respond to them. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you for the kind words. It was um, humbling. Um, I don't see myself in that light anyways. It's just um, doing business like I just do, basically. Uh, like I mentioned, when I started, um, I said, um, pardon me, you know, I know there are different people here, Christians, no Christians, basically. But I said, many of the things I do is by grace, actually, right? And it's the truth, basically, right? I, I do a lot of things for my spirit, meaning that I check my spirit you know, and I get inspirations basically, you know, from my spirit. So that's number one, very key for, for me, right? Um, some things I didn't go to business school. I just knew it, right? So I just, I just knew it. I didn't even know how I knew it. I just knew it. So it's, it's, it's fundamental for, for, for me. And I don't frustrate that, 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 that grace. Now that's, that's one side. The second side is as much as I also uh, follow my spirit, right? You know, I'm also led to certain books, certain documentation, certain articles, and all of that, right, that also help to enhance that knowledge. And sometimes it's good to learn from other people. I also learn from certain conversations. I'm led to have some conversations with some people, and it's just enlightening you. And, oh, I, see, I didn't know that before. You know, and I picked that, which is good, you know, add to my, and I, and I packaged it. But the reason why you see all those templates was because I now figured out that, wait, uh, I've dealt with so many founders through ID, right? And some of these founders, some of them have failed. Some of them have been successful. And I asked myself, why are they failing? And so I figured out that some of them have problems, you know, articulating all these things well. So that's why we decided to write articles and do templates to be able to address each of these touch points because we discovered that the businesses are having those problems. Why? Because we're not interested in giving you money and the money will disappear. We want to know that you're actually using the money properly right you know and so the only way to assure that is to ensure that the business is able to survive and grow and to your point it's true i've i've started termine like five times right so as the business has gone down i started it again started it again started it again meaning that i don't have a problem starting from scratch again right because we've been able to document all those stage, stages and steps basically right due to you know learning from a lot of failures <clears throat> that you know i've had in the past Basically, so you are writing in that in that part also. In terms of the books, <clears throat> to be honest, I've read many things and I still read many things, but I really don't know. I don't have it's just those two ones that I've documented that I have access to the books, but I've read so many things and I really don't even know. Um I don't have links to all those things. So I do a lot of reading sometimes, basically. My wife used to, used to tell me that you're always reading different things. Right, so I have like I have books on venture capital. I have books on um, board, how to manage your board. I have different things. So I read many things basically, right? Because you need to be able to read to understand um, the business. But I don't really have any books in particular. But maybe if I can archive them, I can go and look at them again, and maybe send some some links to Peter if I have the time. As part of my background, um, it's a funny background, right? So I studied urban and regional planning, not in tech, right? So urban and regional planning is um. Jesus, the study of the city <laughs> basically, right? So it has nothing to do with tech, right? So I studied URP, so in in Unilag, so it's more of design, right? The, the design and um, city structure. So that's my past, basically, right? So I learned programming. I'm a full stack developer, front and back, so I can develop a website. The whole ID website you see online, um, that ID ventures, I built it, right? Basically, right? So from beginning to the end, so I can build a website. A software from the beginning, you know, and all of that. I'm also a designer. Uh, I learned how to design too. So I learned all those things because I didn't have money to pay the, the, these people, right? I didn't have money to pay a developer. I didn't have money to pay a designer. I didn't even have money to pay 
financial people initially. So I had to learn finance myself. So I learned finance. Um, I learned um, balance sheets, spreadsheets. I called some accountants, asked them questions. Sometimes I spend like an hour, 30 minutes with an accountant asking him different points, uh, trying to understand what this means. Well, what that means, you know, I've done it over time. Right? So if I hire somebody in my company, I try to learn from that person, that field. So that if the person leaves, I can always replicate it, right? Depending when I hire somebody else. So that's what I've done, basically. So some of those things, I just learned it on the go from different people, basically, right? Um, so I don't have any fund foundation in, I've not even done anything, any course in IT, to be honest. I want to do it now just to validate myself. So I want to go to school again, maybe a, an executive master's and just have like IT degree. But I don't have any right now, basically. Right? So but I'm going to get that pretty soon. Um, as regards to what bettered the whole idea with Termai and why I would take OTP, it's true. OTP is SMS is a very small business, but that's the point of Grace, to be honest. Grace can take selling granite right, and turn it into a very big global business, right? So that's the learning for you. But besides that, there are methodological steps you need to also follow to also scale and grow wealth, right? So growing wealth is not by chance, right? It, it takes, you need to know certain things step by step. So that's why you need to understand all those processes I mentioned, basically, um, right? You know, and the Lord now blesses you on that, basically. So you need to know all those things in depth, basically, right? So the idea of Tema is simple, right? It's messaging. I told you, I have to tell myself, what is this company? The company is, and the foundation is a messaging company. How then, what are the critical components in messaging that banks, fintechs, and these big companies are interested in? And I discovered that they are only interested more in using SMS and WhatsApp for notification and OTPs. The question is, how do we become the best in OTPs and notification? What do we do? How do we improve the software? Because before, people don't use APIs then. It's bulk SMS platform. You go and buy a recharge card, you scratch it, all those things. That's what we're doing then. You know, so the question is, how do we auto automate this entire process how do we even automate the let me show you something so that you would understand what i'm saying um so i can show you this because it's um it's not anything special so i'll just pick an pick an account and show you so you get my point so this is a typical demo dashboard right so ignore the metrics you're seeing it's just a demo dashboard so this is tell my platform now. You see, the, everything here was carefully thought out. The, the, from the point of how do we collect money from customers? Very, very important, right? So the question, how do I collect money from customers? We have to build a whole FinTech product inside Termai to be able to collect money. Now, because the point is we collect the money from you and then we now debit you for every transaction that you do. Basically, so the, the, we needed to figure out how to convince African customer to pay you and we discovered that using subscription does not work. So the question is, how then do we charge this customer? So what we discovered was that we need to charge them on a bit by bit basis. Bit by at that time, this model was not popular. I think many companies copied it from from from, from, from us. We discovered that Nigerians have no problem paying bit by bit. But the question is, when they have said they have pushed so much message, they realize that they have burned so much money already, but they don't know. But that's the best way to collect money from Africans bit by bit. So we discovered that and we decided to do that. And so these are real bank accounts with different banks. When you pay money here, it automatically enters the Termai account. And then we start debiting you every transaction that you do, every message that you do. You know, basically, we start debiting you, you know, and like that, basically. So that's really, you know, different part of the business was carefully thought out, carefully thought out, you know, and all, all those things. The question is, how do we turn OTP? turn notifications into something different, right? And so we decided to, and that's the unique value proposition I talked about, USP, you know, um, the unique selling proposition. That's what we now were able to sell to people and say, see, the money you are paying might look small, but this money would give you a whole suit of tools which are free, right, that you can use to build your business or even build on top of us. So we have companies who are doing other bulk messaging platform, but they are building on top of our platform. Then we would, the, the, the one last thing we thought about was that how do we compete with Twilo, who is a big company globally, compete with Infobip, who is a big company in Europe? How do we have the same service? You know, we must make sure our platform, if we're going to compete with these guys, somebody should must use our platform and, and use their own platform and will not see a difference right, in the sense of in terms of quality. So we're very concerned about quality also, right? So that's what we basically thought through. 
right? And it was at the initial stage, it was just a team of three developers, just me, my co-founder, and one, 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 one other guy. But later, we've already added new developers on top. But it's still the same philosophy that we used to run um, the company, basically, right? Yeah, so. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Wow, wow, wow. Just wow. I don't know what this is doing to me. For me, I've got a startup. Uh, there are other things we're considering. But at this point, I've told myself we now must start many other startups, many other businesses. We just must get back into that space where we take all of these things and begin to apply them. I mean, this is so profound. This is so, so profound. We'll take one more question, and this will be the last question, please. For today, Mr. Golade has done us well. His session was supposed to end by 1 o'clock. Guys, this is 1.49, 1.49, literally 1.50. Let's even just approximate it to 2 p.m., you know. And I'm sure, you know, the country he is, is probably eight hours behind us, six, seven hours, eight hours behind us, you know. So it's still very early hours of the day for him, and he's been this gracious. Man, I'm blessed. I am genuinely blessed. Let's take one last question and we are done, you know, for this uh, session. One last question. One last question. All right. Since no one is asking, I'm just going to ask, uh, Mr. Bolade, of course, I know that after now, people, you know, the whole, thankfully, you know, we share the same uh, faith. And this is with respect to everybody in this room. And if there's anything we've come to learn about the concept of discipleship, within the body is that it is life on life, right? It is not just, I share principles with you and then you go and practice it. No, it is life on life. It is the way the 12 were trained and it is the way they went, you know, to change the world for good. And so I'm sure there are lots of people here, irrespective of, you know, faith tendencies and all of that. There are people who will be, who will be happy to say that life that Mr. Bola they have, I want to have it. I want to be personally mentored. I want to have a situation where I can, you know, reach out to him, you know, and say, sir, I'm having this challenge. You know, the same way, you know, um, you at some point chatted in here and all that, you know, many, many, if not all, would also want that privilege to say, ah, I want to have Bolade in my story, you know, someone I can chat, say, sir, please, I'm running into a roadblock here. I'm having this challenge there. Guide me this pitch there, would you just help me take a look at it? How do we assess you? Which of the social platforms, you know, is best to, to reach you on? Please just speak on that a little bit. Okay, to be very honest with you, right? Um, even if I give you my contacts, to be very honest, I can be very busy to the point that I mean, it would be difficult to, to follow up. I might respond to you, hi, okay, awesome. But to follow you up in terms of business-wise might be quite difficult. Um, can actually prove a little bit difficult, but you could try. I would give, I think, um, what's his name? Peter um, has my contact, so he can always um, reach me. I think for general, LinkedIn is usually very good, right? So I respond to LinkedIn a lot. My LinkedIn chats, basically, I actually respond to it. Um, but WhatsApp too is fine. But the truth is that if you really want to get the business side, if it's the personal side, the faith and all of that, then WhatsApp would be good, right? So I'll, I can also link you up with my network and all of that basically, right, for that. But I may not respond to you business-wise if you go through WhatsApp to be very, I'll be very plain with you. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is that I don't have the time for that. So if mm -hmm. you go through WhatsApp, it's for personal things, like maybe your faith, you know, understanding some things, as well as faith, that's what I do on WhatsApp, right? Mm -hmm. Business, no, no, none at all. If mm -hmm. it's for the business, the best advice I'll give to you, if you really want to get maximum from the resources I have and the tools I've put in place, go through the ID website, to be very honest, right? I, even my current founders, I always direct them there and they always get the best. If you go through the ID website and you schedule a session, mm -hmm. that session, is the best way to be onboarded into the network and the community, right? So people on that community are those who really get the best out of all of that, right? So meaning that uh, we sit down with you, figure out your business, look at all the challenges you have, you know, you could tell the person that you book the session with that you want to speak with me uh, and she would let me know and then we'll book a session. She'll look at my calendar mm -hmm. and pick the right session that we can spend a quality time, 
All right, and then we'll be able to have that time and then we could follow you up business to business uh, you know ensure that you some things are doing because everybody that works with my team they're very good also uh, they also have the same kind of mind i have basically so you know they will follow through on the business so i'm talking of business side, and if you want mm -hmm. us to really drill down into your business mm -hmm. it's too ideal that is the best way mm -hmm. and we drill down into the integrity of your business your business model all of those things we figure it out together right and then you can access other things that we offer there you know, or if we don't, if you don't qualify for the ones that we offer, if if it's paid ones, we can tell you maybe give mm -hmm. discounts or whatever. But that's the best channel for the business side, right? But mm -hmm. if you come to the WhatsApp and you go business, you know, you might disappoint a little bit because you know there are too many conversations mm -hmm. happening there. So mm -hmm. I like to keep that into personal, family, faith, and all of that basically. Mm -hmm. right? So that's really... perfect. Let me put you on the spot a little bit. Are you a pastor? Ha 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 ha. Um, yeah, so I, yes, you could say that, right, because I'm not ordained in, in any way, but then I run, um, I oversee a community of uh, believers, basically, right, um, it's called Team 101, mm -hmm. um, let me send you a link on that, um, it's a business group, basically, mm -hmm. um, on Instagram, so, so not, uh, sorry, we're on Instagram, but it's a business group, um, sorry, just, if you go on Instagram, just go Team 101, or let me, mm -hmm. have a link okay. in. Okay. Sorry, we have a LinkedIn account. Let me share the account. So it's more like a business fellowship for believers, basically. Um, it's not specific to any, um, what you call it, church, but uh, mm -hmm. we have brethren mm -hmm. from similar churches or from different churches, basically. Right? So, but yeah, um, mm -hmm. so I oversee them. So, yeah, you could say that. Perfect. Perfect. So please share that. And Mr. Bolade, you have done us good. You have done us well. You have sacrificed not just the time, but also the timing of the day, you know, where you're probably supposed to be in bed or, you know, someone like you, a busy executive who needs to wake up, you know, to get things done. And uh, you have sacrificed all of that to speak to these, uh, you know, young entrepreneurs. And for that, I am eternally, eternally grateful. Of course, of course, I know that, you know, uh, it is not every time we'll be able to, you know, get this access, but for sure, uh, you are my brother. You are a CEO that I respect very much. Okay, yes. So, guys, don't worry. We'll take that. I will actually get some of these things from you. So, in our newsletter, we'll also just put these mm -hmm. things in our newsletter so that, you know, people can just come there uh, directly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for sure. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, no yeah. So, thank you so, so much. For sure, you know, we're going to be bringing more invitations, both here in Nigeria and, of course, there in the U.S. We plan on holding some of our meeting editions in North America in the U.S. sometime 2024 next year. And of course, you know, when that time comes, I'm going to reach out to you. But thank you so, so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you does not exactly cut it. No thank Guys, you for, for unmute, having me. Thank unmute you. yourself. Type it in the chat box. Thank you so Please much, let, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thank you. 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 This has been, I, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. The things that you have shared is thank not just, so is not just the principles. It is that you are actually even opening up your business model, which is very powerful, which is really powerful. So that way, as anybody is working, we are patterning after something, which is, again, the Christian principle around life on life, around, you know, giving an example to follow, which is really, really just profound. Thank you. Even, of course, uh, for the materials you're going to be sending, you know, all of those templates, thank you in advance. For sure, we are going to share it you know, with everyone. Thank you genuinely. You have made this experience worth it. You have made this experience worth it. You are genuinely, Sincerely. you know, made this worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you genuinely, Mr. Bolade. I'm going to read. We are grateful, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, I would also do something. So some of those books, I have access to a copy. So in case they ask to pay, I'll just send them, I'll send them Peter, the e copies of them, so you don't have to pay for it. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so okay, much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you so much. Oh, well, okay. thank, thank, you. thank you, sir. We are grateful. We're so grateful, thank sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank thank you, thank you sir. sir. This is the beginning. No um, so before uh, you go, Mr. Bolade, we're a community of young entrepreneurs and companies. So somewhere along our journey, one of the things we also want to do is begin to have this community of mentors community of people like you that we can always run to for guidance, counsel, for pointing in the right direction. And yes, to address the elephant in the room for money. <laughs> so, for funding. 
So for sure, I'm going to be sending you details on all of that. I understand your time is in limited supply, but of course, as much as we can get, we will make good use of them. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Baladin. Thank you. Please enjoy the rest of your day. My regards Thank to you, very you much. your wife and everybody in the house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank I'll be you. great. Thank great day ahead, okay. everyone. Yes. yes. You too. Yeah. Nice. All right, guys. Um, before we go, um, 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 everybody here knows that today has been amazing. Today has been, you know, profound. Tomorrow we continue. All right. Tomorrow we continue. But I don't even know what to say. Today has been what is. Uncle, Uncle P. Hello, Uncle P. Yes, sir. Please. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. you. We're thanking everybody. Guys, please, can we just unmute and, and, and really appreciate the host? Be, see, can we just unmute and really appreciate the host? Like thank he's. You. We are yeah. so grateful for this session. And it is beyond. It thank, is you, beyond Mr. thank you so much. Thank you so much, Uncle P. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. P. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So it, it's beyond what we anticipated, right? Mm. It's beyond what we anticipated. And to now make it seem, I mean, on the extreme, you made it free because you now wanted people to come and learn, mm. right? At this point, even if I, even if you say you want to sell the sessions, I mean, the recorded sessions, people will pay. Mm. <laughs> because the, the, the level of information is the same thing they do in um, you know they just cut clips of videos and tell you okay this is what to look out for you know this kind of things and you know so I really want to say thank you on behalf of everybody you know mm. and thank you so much for all you've done mm. and what you did today and all you still intend to do for us I mean the effort of forwarding those um, nuggets the books the links reaching out <laughs> People close their network, so I knew you're opening your network. So I am. It's it's really a, a a good thing to be a believer. Thank you so much for this. Thank platform. you, thank you, so, thank you, Lord. Real quick, before you guys go, uh, I'm going to sell myself a little bit. Put me on your board, all right? And I say that in every sense of <laughs> the word. Put me on your board. Uh, the reason I said that is part of things I want to do is open myself. So it could be executive, it could be non-executive, all right? But think about it. If you want to develop a board and you're looking for people to put on your board, you might think of, you know, writing me, send me a text, chat me up, you know. I wouldn't necessarily, because personally, I also have my limits. I would not necessarily be, if you say, for instance, that you want to sell tobacco, I may not be on that board, right? If you say to, for, I mean, but I also have my own limits and my ethics, all right? Uh, uh, but for sure, we can begin to also look at how we can work with each other on a very close link level to begin to scale. All right. So on that note, guys. All right. I was going to ask how we could even connect with you. We've been hearing how to connect with the speakers, but I do not know your name on LinkedIn and Instagram and there about. Uh, so if you check those the, our communications, you will see my name on the flyer. Dingba Peter. I can type that in my chat box. I can't see. Okay, I can see. Uh, my name is Dingra Peter on all platforms. Dingra Peter on all platforms. But for sure, LinkedIn is my number one spot. So please, you know, what's going on? It's not going. On. I don't know. Oh wait, sorry. Okay, so yes, I just sent my name. All right, so please, you can reach out on LinkedIn. All right, that's my number one plus, uh, number one place. But every other platform for sure, uh, Instagram, you know, all of that. All right, guys, uh, so please reach out, reach out on anything, just reach out. Our goal is Thank to, you so much, sir. to have that platform where we curate, you know, resources for startups. And by this, we'll keep, you know, by that across, but I will keep doing this. In fact, I can hint you already that after now, our next program, which is virtual, our next virtual program will be investment readiness, you know, kind of program where all the things that need to be done, including all the documents that need to be prepared in that journey, they will be prepared. You will prepare them, you know, there'll be a training on how to prepare it. You'll prepare it, send it to the facilitators, you know, they will assess it, will come in a group like this and dissect it and pieces it for everybody. So if we are 20, 
in that Google, not be more than 20 actually for that program. So that we can have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with more than 20, you know. So people will prepare their pitch deck, business plan will come in this meeting. Everybody will present, we will pieces it. You will go back. Another person will, will pieces it. So that by the time you are now going to see an investor, you know what I'm talking about. You are well prepared. And thankfully, I am exposed to the world of you know investors. So once we've gone through that journey, and I am very comfortable, you know, with what we are prepared. Of course, I am happy to also take it personally and begin to, you know, pass it around to different uh, the investors network, not just in Nigeria, globally speaking. All right. On that note, guys, we have come to the end of this. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we will have somebody from the United States, uh, a lady who's who wrote that best-selling book, Startup Business. It's going to be coming to, to us tomorrow. And uh, I've been thinking about it. I drag Son Philip, one of my guys come talking about some I'm, I'm thinking about it but you know whatever it is you're going to get an email from us about how tomorrow will play out we have only one session tomorrow during the day but evening we have a bit more sessions then on friday the vice chancellor of the lagos business school you heard uh, uh, mr Bolade speak about lagos business school lagos business school the vice chancellor of lagos business school who is now the pc of the entire pan-atlantic university Will be coming to speak to us this will be profound in the guy uh, the man that uh, mr golare shared whatsapp with you know and all that to scale to the next level in himself we've spoken already if i was still spoke yesterday will be coming you know to speak to us on friday but for tomorrow you don't want to miss tomorrow because remember what Golade said sometimes you need a of course there's evening session every day um yes the, the, there's evening session every day okay um, um, sometimes you need an address in Delaware to get funding. Sometimes you need an, away, an, an Atlanta address. So the person that will help us do all of that, maneuver all of that, get us registered. Thankfully, Golade offers something similar to that, right? But we now have a special, a special person, a United States citizen, you know, who also does that. All right, she's going to be logging in tomorrow. And she's going to take us through that journey. So it's going to be intense. Call your friends, call everybody to be part of it. We're going to be sending you you know, an email uh, to that request. Okay? On that note, uh, for those of us that... Please, we... how do we access the recordings? Uh, for sure. We're going to be posting them. We're going to be posting them on our YouTube channel. The entire, you know, the entire thing on our YouTube channel. Again, Youths in Business Forum or YouTube. So please check us out and subscribe. And also tell your guys to also please... Uh, Is there Youth in Business Forum? That's the name on YouTube as well. Yes, please. Youths, plural. Okay. Y-O-U-T-H-S. Youths. Okay. Yes, on YouTube. So please look out for it. Subscribe to it. You know. All right, guys. On that note, this is a community. And let's keep growing, you know, this community. After now, after now, we will call for volunteers, which is where we actually really have you know, a robust uh, you know, a community. So if you are interested, I will leave my number. You know what? It's private message me on this number. But please, I plead with you guys. When you chat me, there are, so I just left my number. When you chat me, don't send too many messages, right? Don't say, good morning, sir. Hope you are doing well, sir. That's a, you know, one line, good morning, sir. You come back again. Hope you are doing well. Three, like another message. How is the family? Another message. I just, no, no, no. Just say, hey, good morning, Peter. Go straight into it. Only one message. I'll read through it because, you know, obviously there are lots of messages everywhere. So please chat me up personally. You know, if there are major concerns, you know, things that. And if you also want to join our volunteers network, you want to be part of the community that we are growing. All right. Please uh, chat me. Let me know so that we can add you to that group. All right. On that note, guys, today has been good. Today has been great. Today has been very, very great. The things that you have heard, frankly speaking, it is after second, third, fourth listening that the thing will enter, frankly speaking. So you have to, like the lady asked, how do we get these videos? When they are posted, we'll send out an email so you know that, you know, the videos are now live. I will post them in order. First speaker, second speaker, like that, like that. You know, so please do yourself a favor, right? Everything depends on this. You need to invite this. All of us here is the reason we are doing this, guys. All of us here can indeed be successful together. We can. We can. And we are hoping that we will. We can be successful, all of us together. And that's the goal. So listening, logging, do what you got to do. 
and you know, let's let's tell this story together. Okay. On that note, guys, please enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget, if you are trying to set up a board, let me know. Let me know what you expect of your board, and uh, let me also think about it if it is the kind of business I want to be part of. All right. On that note, guys, please enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. Thank you.